welcome you again in the classes of evs academy today we have to start the new chapter in the last class we have completed the environmental pollution all the types of pollutions we have completed today i am going to start the solid waste management if you look at this particular unit the nature of this unit is there would be no numerical question from this particular unit there will be only and only theoretical questions from this particular unit and if you look at the past years papers how many number of questions you can get so the number of questions in the past year papers varies from 3 to 7 on an average approximately you will get four questions in each paper so suppose if you are going to uh, give the upcoming examination so you can assume that more than four or four questions at least you will get from this particular chapter which is solid waste management and again i am repeating this is purely theoretical chapter now let's move ahead to the chapter straight and what are the things that you have to remember one by one we will discuss them so the very first thing the question should be that what is the solid waste so as in the name it is a kind of solid and solid that is not in use or that is we need to dump that is the solid waste and it is containing or it is having all the things which are the garbage or refuse or maybe sludge from the waste water treatment which is left after removing all the water so that solid portion of the waste water is sludge then water supply treatment plant that solid things coming out from the water supply treatment plant the air pollution deposition or the particulate matters we are getting after the purification of air control facility and other discarded material resulting from the industrial processes may be commercial processes like building materials or the demolishing things those are the commercial uh, the solid waste then we have the mining materials and the agricultural operations and from the community activities so all that solid form of waste is are under the solid waste category it is important to note that the definition of solid waste is not limited to the wastes that are physically solid it is not necessary that the waste should be only and on the solid the waste is material can be liquid as well the semi solid as well and it is containing some gaseous material as well that all the things are under the category of solid waste do not assume that all the solid waste are solid in nature these can be semi solid liquid or gaseous as well if you look at these solid wastes you can categorize them in the three different categories according to its origin that you can again define the particular types of the solid waste here the domestic type of solid waste we have industrial type of waste you can have commercial type of waste construction and the building material or maybe institutional type of solid waste you can have under the category of solid waste based on the origin of the waste from where that particular waste is coming then according to the content of the waste again you can define this waste in multiple categories first category here can be the organic material waste glass material waste then metal waste or plastic paper waste anything is possible that all under the different category of the solid waste based on the content of that particular waste then according to the hazardous potential how much toxic that is how much hazardous hazardous that particular waste is according to that again you can classify it under the multiple categories like toxic elements non toxic elements flammable which is kind of waste which is ready to take fire very easily that is flammable type of solid waste radioactive from which the radioactive pollution is coming out or radio waves are coming out maybe alpha beta gamma radiation is coming out that is radioactive type of solid waste infectious solid waste which can cause any disease problem in the different organisms or in the human beings those would be infectious solid waste for example the waste which is coming out from the hospital or maybe from laboratories so those all are kind of infectious solid waste so under this particular chapter we have to study the nature of these different solid waste that is the first thing another thing what are the solutions of these different solid wastes that we have to discuss and the third thing that we have to discuss is the different laws and regulation rules and regulations under which you can just decompose these different solid wastes so all that thing we have to discuss in this particular unit and that's all about this particular unit is so let's see the first thing that we have to discuss here in the solid waste is the types of the solid waste so the mainly solid waste is categorized in two different types first is the hazardous waste 
the handling of the hazardous waste is little bit different as compared to the non hazardous waste so second category we have here is the non hazardous waste in the hazardous waste we have e waste e waste or you can see electronic waste which is coming out from the multiple electronic equipments that is the e waste biomedical waste biomedical waste that waste which is coming out from the laboratory maybe hospitals that is the biomedical waste agricultural waste that is coming out from the agricultural operations battery waste which is directly coming out from the battery because battery is having multiple harmful elements in it like mercury cadmium nickel zinc these all materials you can find out in the batteries then radioactive waste uh, waste from where the radiation is caused by any particular waste material maybe alpha beta gamma and it can ultimately lead to the multiple disease problem and harm to the environment so those are under the category of radioactive waste which is under the category of hazardous waste then we have the non hazardous waste for example domestic or kitchen waste which is coming out from the household household operations so those all are under the category of domestic and kitchen waste then we have the municipal waste and municipal waste papers plastic and those kind of different materials you will have in the municipal waste then we have the industrial waste that is coming out from any particular type of industry only construction waste for example building material cement and then the different raw materials of the building that is coming out from the destruction of the building so those all are under the category of construction waste which is again a type of non hazardous waste so these two are the main category of the different type of waste now we have to discuss how to know which type of waste is having what property so here we have to discuss the characteristics of the different type of solid waste so to in order to identify the exact characteristics of the municipal wastes it is necessary that we analyze them using physical and chemical parameters so here in the characterization process we have to discuss about the two main parameters the first parameter here would be the physical parameter the second parameter here we have to discuss the, that is the chemical parameter in physical parameter we will see that all the physical characteristics like density and all that physical characteristic of any particular material and in the chemical parameters we have to see what is the ph what is vc what is the chemical characteristics of that particular type of solid waste so first we will discuss here the physical characteristic of that particular solid waste so information and data on the physical characteristics of the solid waste are important for the selection and operation of the equipment this is important and for the analysis and design of the disposal facilities so according to that the physical characteristics whether it is a liquid material whether it is a solid material whether it is mixture of that according to that you have to design your equipment and you have to design your disposal facility so that is very important that's why we have to study the physical characteristic of any particular type of solid waste under the physical characteristics also we have multiple categories that we have to discuss the very first category under the physical characteristics is the density density of the material so the density of the solid waste is mass per unit volume that is kg per meter cube that we have to find out whenever you are disposing or maybe operating with the solid waste material that is a critical factor in the design of the solid waste management system for example the design of the sanitary landfills sanitary landfills means landfills landfills i think you know what is the landfills landfills are the area or maybe a dump site where all the wastage material are dumped or all the wastage material are left there for the degradation process so those are the landfills nel fence you have seen in the mun uh, municipal cities or that metropolis in politan cities the large hills of the landfills you can see there because of the excess amount of waste generated there and the unavailability or lack of the treatment systems there so those are the landfills so landfills can be also of two types one is the sanitary landfills another one is the normal landfill that you have seen already in sanitary landfills you have to design your landfills in such a way so it is not going to harm the environment by any mean and ultimately that would be decomposed and mixed with the soil 
and it will provide nutrition to the plant. So those are the sanitary landfills. In sanitary landfills, you have to look at, at the multiple factors and parameters. So it is not harming the environment and only decomposing in its prescribed area. So those all are the sanitary landfills. Sanitary landfills are generally not open. These are totally covered, maybe by the help of mud layer or soil layer. So the design of the sanitary landfills are very important. And for that, you should know the density of the material, what type of materials are there. For example, you cannot dump plastic in the sanitary landfills because plastic is not going to decompose there. So only the biodegradable materials you have to use there. Then suppose you want to store the wastage material in any particular site for the time being. So for that also, you should know the density types of collection and the transport vehicles that we need to use. For that also, we should know the density of solid waste. According to that, we can design our collection system and the transport vehicles as well. So these all things are generally helped by knowing the density of the waste material. So that is the first physical characteristic that you should know about the solid waste. The second very important characteristics that you should know about the solid waste is the moisture content present in the solid waste. For example, a particular biomedical waste is having very high moisture content. So that is not suitable for the incineration. What is incineration? Incineration, incineration process is done in the equipment called as incinerators. These incinerators have a kind of volume there where, where you have to put your all solid waste or the wastage material and then the decomposition takes place in very high temperature. So ultimately what you are doing, you are just burning the materials here. So if your material is having very high moisture content, so those uh, things are not suitable for the burning process or incineration process. So first you have to remove the moisture or it should be in the limited amount, then only you can go with the incineration. So that's why the moisture content analysis is very important. The moisture content is defined as the ratio of the weight of water. So weight, wet weight of that material minus removing all the water, you have to take the dry weight after removing of all the water. So that difference will give you the moisture content amount in weight. And if you once divide this weight with the total wet weight, so you will get percentage of the moisture content after multiplying this particular thing with 100. So on that way, you will get the moisture percentage there. This moisture percent is telling that how much water is present in per 100 unit of that particular solid waste. Suppose you have one kg of the solid waste and in the one kg, there is a hundred gram of the water present in this. So wet weight, when you will take, you will get 1000 gram. After drying that all the material, 100 gram water would be go away and only 900 gram of the material would be left. So 1000 minus 900 is equals to 100 divided by the wet weight. Wet weight you will get would be 1000. So that is the already measured weight that you have already measured. This is multiplied by 100. So this and this cancel, this and this cancel. And ultimately you are getting that in your waste material, 10% of the moisture is present. So moisture increases the weight of the solid waste that you can see here. Earlier, the solid waste or dry weight is only 900 gram, but 100 gram of water is added there. So it is increasing your weight of the solid waste. And thereby the cost of the collection and transport will also increase. So this content, moisture content is very harmful. You can say in the terms of just disposing, collecting, transporting the wastage material. Ultimately, it is increasing your cost in all the things. It increases energy demand by the incineration. As I have told you, you cannot incinerate the content which is having very high moisture content. Otherwise, there would be very high demand of energy by the moisture present in it. First, you have to vaporize all the moisture present in it. Once it is dried completely, then only you can burn it. Otherwise, not. So that's why this is not good to have high moisture content in the incinerators, solid waste type in the incinerators because wet waste consumes energy for the evaporation of water first and then it takes it takes place the burning there or incinerating there so this is all about the moisture content of the solid waste you should also remember this formula also so i hope it is clear to you
the next physical characteristic that we have to discuss here is the size of the material or the size of the solid waste so it is important because of its significance in the design of the mechanical separator and shredder now mechanical separator means that separator which is working in a machine or mechanized mode that is the mechanical separators so suppose multiple type of mechanical separators are nowadays available some are based on the laser beam some of them are based on the moisture content so suppose you have a belt conveyor belt and you have ordered the machine that all the materials which is having more than 30% moisture so those or materials should be removed so in this conveyor belts the solid wastage will move ahead and there would be a scanner maybe spectroscopy maybe electromagnetic radiation based so these will scan the materials and whenever it is pounding more than 30% moisture immediately it will order the machine to remove that equipment so there would be a arm here which will ultimately pull this material from out of the conveyor belt so this is one example suppose you want to just separate the plastic material so again through scanning you will get to know the machine will get to know and with a arm arm separator it can remove easily all the plastics present in that so that is a kind of mechanical separator then shredder what is the shredder shredder here is used to just keep small pieces of a large material so suppose you have a waste material which is of this particular size but you want a smaller size of these materials so what you have to do you have to put this in the shredder and in the shredder you will get a small small pieces of these particular solid waste which is crushed there in the shredder so that is the work of the shredder and if you want to do the shredding of the solid waste so what type or what uh, size of the shredder you want to use that will depend on the size of the waste material if the size of the waste material will be very large then large shredder you have to use and if sizes are very small then large shredder you cannot use because the large shredder will not going to chop the smaller amounts a smaller size of the waste so that way the design of the shredder and design of the mechanical separators these all are based on the size of the material so according to that you have to choose your equipment as well so that is the size of the solid wastage that is the third physical characteristic so i hope it is clear to you